It's time for another iOS developer portfolio review slash critique video. And I do these every couple of months. And the reason I do them is to give you out there some, some ideas, some inspiration to create your own portfolio. And before we get into today's examples, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get started. It'll help you get an iOS developer portfolio up and running pretty quickly. All right, first up we have Harold Davis. And what I like about Harold's is it's, it's right here, right, about me. I get to learn a lot about Harold like right away as I scroll down. What am I up to lately, right? I, I see him in his natural environment, if you will. I see he likes ridiculously large uh, ultra wide monitors, but I can see him working you see that's his day job on nights and weekends. You can see he's working uh, on a game. Uh, so that's really interesting and unique. I see some screenshots here, uh, life hobbies, you know, Japanese swordsmanship, uh, hanging out with his fiance down here. So I get to learn about Harold at a glance. Now, why is this important? Uh, because just as important as your work, right? When, when I'm looking to hire somebody, like, yes, your work is very important, but who you are is also incredibly important. So don't be afraid to share a little bit about yourself. And that's what I like uh, about Harold. So we're going to come back to this uh, kind of home screen in a second, but let's continue on. Let's see the resume here, uh, my work. Yep, he was at Full Story. Again, I like how his, his site is very visual. I get to see him working. Again, I'm, I'm learning about him. I like that. Uh, here, he used to work at Apple as a uh, software engineer slash build integration. That's cool. Again, more pictures, very visual. I like that. Uh, I used to work at U-Haul. Now here's where uh, one piece of advice, uh, and this is you're gonna see this theme throughout all the portfolios, is I, surface all your cool stuff to the top. Like don't make people dig for the, the cool, interesting stuff about you. And to me, and I don't know, maybe this is just me, what makes Harold interesting is all the stuff he's doing uh, with the video game stuff, which here, as you can see, is like all the way down at the bottom, right? The Noble Sword, uh, well, more on that in like the project section. But again, I had to dig pretty deep uh, to learn about him building his own game. For example, I know he creates his own pixel art. He's building the whole game. Let's, let's just go to the projects. And again, to me, that's what makes him like super unique and interesting. It makes me want to have a phone call with him. Because at the end of the day, the point of these portfolios, like the portfolio itself is not going to get you the job. To me, the purpose of the portfolio is for you to pass the initial screening and earn that phone call, right? I call it earning the deeper look. Like you want somebody to look at your portfolio and be like, okay, this is interesting. I want to talk to this person. Like that's the point of the portfolio. Now you're in the interview process. Now it's up to you. Whereas if you don't have something nice like this, you may not even pass that initial screening to where somebody says, I want to talk to this person. Okay, I'm scrolling down to his video game stuff. Like I would put it above U-Haul. Uh, maybe you did something more interesting at U-Haul, but to me, this isn't all that interesting. Again, this is what makes you unique, right? You can scroll through uh, the images here to see, but what's really cool, right? You got like videos of what you've done. You, you do a really good job showcasing your work. In fact, I would consider moving this video <laughs> to your home screen, right? About me, like I would consider, you know, amongst these images, maybe including that video, like showing the controller support. Again, the, the message here is surface the coolest stuff, the most interesting stuff about you to the top. Like try not to make people like dig for that. Um, back down to the gaming stuff here. Uh, I think that was pretty much it on there. But no, he, he does YouTube videos talking about indie game vlog, uh, you know, show some of his code. One thing I would mention, I would, I would maybe try to actually format this into, you know, like when you see like a blog post tutorial, how they actually have the code rather than a screenshot. But this is still okay. But again, I can like see, you know, what his code is. Here's his unit tests. And I can see he's being honest, right? He's still getting better and learning, right? He's just starting out with the unit tests here. But again, more uh, video game stuff. And what I like about this, he also shows his process. That is very helpful too, when you're trying to learn about somebody. And he shows it here in these pictures, right? If I look, I can see his iPad sketches on like what the world was gonna look like and what it ended up being, right? I can see how he plans stuff. So again, I'm just learning so much about him, his process, what he builds is super interesting. Um, like, like I said, he would definitely earn uh, the deeper look by looking at this. And I wanted to start with this one because that is, that is the whole point of a portfolio. Past the screening phase, to get onto the next phase of the interview and, and present yourself well. Okay, next up we have Abe Mangona here. Uh, and I like the, the minimalism here, uh, just the overall like look of this, I, I kind of like. Again, I, I think a lot of people struggle with, with information hierarchy. It's kind of what I was just saying about Harold is surfacing like the cool stuff and making it easy to learn the best stuff about you, right? Put your best foot forward. So here's where I think this needs improvement. So right here, you say this is your featured project, right? Featured gaming. Kind of confusing naming. I think that's the name of the app, but it's also the featured project. 
a little confusing naming on, on the website there, but to me, what you're telling me here is this is what I'm most proud of, right? Cause you have your other projects down here that are gonna, Hey, uh, check these out if you want. This is what I'm most proud of. This is what I want to showcase at the beginning. That's the vibe I get. But when I click on it, there's like nothing here, <laughs> right? I mean, it's the same screenshots and then literally two sentences um, about this. So if this is in fact your featured project, what you want to brag about, right? Cause if I'm looking to hire you, I want to know about the, the project you're most proud of your, your best work. That's what I want to know about. And to me, this is what you're telling me it is, except I'm not learning anything about it. So what I would expect here is a much more in depth, you know, description of this app, maybe more screenshots, you know, five or six screenshots that I can either scroll through or they're all spread out a couple paragraphs about what you did, what you built, some of the, the, the technical stuff that you, you put in there. Again, if this is indeed your featured project, which is what you have it as. So yeah, that's my biggest piece of advice here is I would flesh that out more because um, you have your, your projects down here. Like we click on the lottery app, right? This is decent for like, a, for like not your main projects. This is decent, right? Show off some screenshots, a couple paragraphs about what you did, right? Like you're more descriptive here. My goal is to recreate the iOS, prove the overall performance while maintaining existing React Native project. Like I'm learning about like what you actually did here. Um, but again, this one's buried. So yeah, just do that with like your, your main app. That's, that's the biggest thing missing, I think here is uh, fleshing this out. And then I do like the fact that you share your blog posts, right? I don't think it's imperative that someone has a blog, but if you are sharing your work, if you are blogging, uh, it's nice to see uh, that you can share that because it gives me an opportunity to see how well you can communicate these ideas. You know, because maybe you're working on a team or, or maybe just me as the client, you have to explain things. If I can read a blog post or, or watch a video and see your communication skills, you know, how you, again, communicate these difficult ideas to people that may not know it, that is a, a big plus in the world of development. But yeah, Abe, to wrap this up, just flesh out this feature gaming. Uh, again, unless this isn't your, your featured project. Maybe, maybe the lottery one is and you want to talk more about that. But there's just... Again, there's a disconnect. You're telling me this is what you're most proud of, but there's like nothing here. So that's the biggest piece of advice there. Next up we have Daniela. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you probably already know what I'm gonna say is that you're kind of wasting this hero uh, aspect, right? I'm, I'm getting your name and where you're from. Cool, but doesn't really tell me that much. Not to mention I gotta wait for all this to show up if I wanna like read all this. A little bit of a waste of time. And I'm being a little harsh right now because I think you have some impressive stuff on your portfolio. It's just buried. Again, back to the whole theme, right? The information hierarchy, like surface the coolest stuff about you to the top. So anyway, I'll show you what I mean, right? Okay, so first page, I just get name where you're at down here. Okay, cool. I get to learn a little bit about you. Um, I would make these slightly shorter. Again, people just don't read text, right? A lot of people are just lazy. That's just the truth of it. And it may not seem like a lot of text, but again, you'd be surprised. People just skim over everything. But now if we keep scrolling down, now here's where things start to get interesting. And even... Now I have to click to get to it. So I'll, I'll let me go back. I will literally explain my journey when I was looking at this first in yellow. I was like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Like I was not impressed at all, still not impressed. And then I clicked on this and now, now I was like, oh, okay. But think about that. I had to scroll down three pages and then click to be impressed. And I'm not saying that probably came off wrong, but my point is your cool stuff, what is impressive about you is buried three pages down and behind a click. That's kind of the whole point I'm trying to get at. Because when I look at this, like this looks like a good app. Like I can tell you have a good uh, UI sense, good colors, like I, I like that. Although this red clock doesn't really match up with that. I'm not sure what's up with this dark mode thing, but <laughs> just the two screens on the right, like I really like, you know, the, the design, the look and feel. It shows me that you can probably build a quality app, at least the UI of it. Again, we're talking surface level first impressions, right? Passing the screening. Again, the more impressive stuff is even buried further, right? So want to learn more about, your, about the project, you can click here. And it's just, it's kind of a hard to see button that takes me to the GitHub. And if I scroll down, cool, you took the time to make a good readme, nice. Again, more screenshots, I can see more about the app. You, you fleshed out your readme. This shows me, you know, you're, you're pretty organized. Cause again, I look at a lot of GitHub repos and readmes and they don't all, they don't all look this nice. This is, this is rare to like get a readme like this outside of like a very high end open source project. So, okay. So that, that was all impressive. Again, buried behind a couple clicks. Let's look at uh, another, well, anyway, back to this. I would make your GitHub button, like make this button more prominent and try to get people to click on it. Like right now, I feel like it's not encouraged to click on it. Again, this is more stuff that's impressive about you but again, it's buried and kind of hidden. Make that more prominent. Okay, so if I close this out, 
Uh, let's go to analyzer. Same thing, more screens, cool. It's a sentiment analyzer. The GitHub here is also pretty impressive. I like how you how you displayed it, right? You have an animated GIF here showing the app. That's just the onboarding, but you can see the app in action. I like that. And then here, like I said, your readme, really, really good, right? I can see you're, you're telling me about what you did in the app, how you're analyzing the sentiment, how the score is calculated, a breakdown, concepts used. This is all the great stuff. It's just buried. <laughs> and and what I'm, why I'm saying this is because I, most people may not dig that deep, right? They may just look at the beginning, especially if they're screening like 50 to 100 candidates or whatever, they may not get to the good stuff. So I'll close this out. And again, I know this may like require like a complete redesign of your, your website. And I know that's probably a pain, but again, look, I got to scroll all the way down. Then I got to click. It's just information hierarchy. Um, what I would recommend is this kind of stuff, like the screenshots and the little blurb, like don't make me click, like just put those like here, right? Like first of all, I would get rid of this. Maybe put your, the, the picture of you kind of maybe one or two sentences about you and then get right into your screenshots of your app. Because again, that alarm app, it's a good looking app. It shows off good UI sense and you're piquing their interest like right away, which again is key when you're trying to pass that initial surface level screening. So again, Daniela, impressive stuff. It's just buried. Next up we have Alex. And I always like to show one of these GitHub readme portfolios because this is, this is like pretty simple to do. You're just customizing a readme with some images, but it's, it's kind of almost like, I think what a bare minimum <laughs> of what a developer like should have to showcase their work. Now, of course, you know, going above and beyond building your own website or using Squarespace, that's great, but bare minimum, you know, you can just create a quick readme with some images. Uh, and this is, again, it allows me to see the work by scrolling quickly, right? I'm seeing screenshots. I can dig into the work if I want, uh, seeing more screenshots here. Uh, the one piece of advice is, uh, get a followers. There you go. Uh, the one piece of advice is that, well, on this note, I didn't see any mention, and this is not just because this is my course. Uh, I didn't see any mention that this was like a course that you followed, right? So if I didn't know any better, I would be looking at this and this is coming across as like something you built yourself, right? Some idea you had and you made, and that's, that's disingenuous. And again, I'm not, not cause it's my course. I don't care about that. Like if I'm looking to hire you and in my mind, I think that you did all this stuff on your own, you built this on your own and then come to find out later, this was a course you followed. I don't know that, that there's like a disconnect there. And I think even this Twitter one is a, is a course that you followed as well. I'm pretty sure. Um, I know a lot of people do Twitter as like a course. So that's a, a note to anybody. Absolutely highlight the courses you've done um, on your portfolio. Just be very clear that it was a tutorial or a course that you followed. So you don't give off the impression that you came up with this yourself and built it yourself. So that's the one piece of feedback there. And then a little bit as I would be more consistent with your images, right? So up here you have kind of like the app store look. That's fine. I get why you wanted to show off this. It looks nice. Um, here you have like the, the three phones across, and this is kind of the style that you've been going for, except here you have four. Um, here you have three. Cool. If we scroll down, well, I know gifts are kind of hard, but I would do your best to try to make the gift in the phone. I know that's going to take a lot of extra work. It's possible though. Uh, put a, a phone frame around uh, the gift. Uh, anyway, just make the look consistent, right? Three across consistent three across. Well, this is actually six, but, and here's why, and maybe this is me. Maybe I'm just anal like this, but the vibe I get when I see something that is super consistent, clean, easy to read and understand, to me, that translates to you, your personality, which translates to your code, right? And the type of code base I want is something that's clean, organized, very easy to understand. So I, that's why I value just like that type of qualities in like all the work you do, because I do believe like it translates. If you have a haphazard portfolio or, or website or everything else in your life, I believe that's probably gonna translate into your code. I know I'm probably gonna catch some flack for that uh, in the comments, but I just do. I think that kind of stuff carries over. Now, like I said, a portfolio is a great way for you to pass that initial screening, earn the deeper look, especially with smaller companies uh, or independent contracting or freelancing. You know, people want to see your work before they hire you. So a portfolio is a great way to do that. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now I know as developers, you may be tempted to, to build your own, right? But you know, building and maintaining your own website and, you know, making sure it works good on all screen sizes, all the different browsers, like that's a lot of headache, right? And we're iOS developers. We want to build apps. We want to spend our time learning and improving our craft of iOS development. So let something like Squarespace handle a simple portfolio site for you. You know, you can create a really good looking portfolio with Squarespace's built-in themes. They handle analytics and SEO for you. 
again, it's just a great way to offload the work of getting a portfolio up and running very quickly. So if you're ready to start building that portfolio, start tinkering around with it, start showcasing your work, go to squarespace.com to get started. And when you're ready to actually launch that website, make it real, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, that wraps it up for this portfolio review. Again, I do this every couple of months. So if you submitted a portfolio and didn't get featured, you know, keep improving it and submit again. Like I said, I'm, I'm always gonna need a constant stream of portfolios. So uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one.